Welcome to the AWS Executive Summit presented by Accenture at AWS reInvent 2021. I'm Lisa Martin and I've got two CUBE alum here with me. Please welcome Mara Basarovic, Managing Director of Global IT Enterprise Architecture at Accenture, and Chris Wegman, Accenture AWS Business Group Technology and Practice Senior Managing Director. Gentlemen, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Lisa, great to be back. Thanks, Isn't Lisa, great to be here. It is nice to be back in a way, right? Here we are at this hybrid event, but I want to talk about what Accenture is doing with its with uh, AWS serving its clients, and then we're going to get into your own internal use case, drinking your own champagne. Chris, let's go ahead and start with you. Talk to us about what Accenture is doing with AWS to serve its clients. Yeah, Lisa, it's exciting, as you said, to be back in this hybrid event, and um, you know, for me, this will be my tenth uh, reinvent, uh, and for Accenture, we're in year. 14 of our partnership with AWS and, and actually year six of our, our partnership called the Accenture AWS Business Group. And, you know, the focus over the last year has been uh, helping our clients come out of the pandemic uh, stronger than, than where they, they started, right? And a lot of that has been around focusing our customers getting past cloud migration, past cloud modernization, and getting further into what we now call the cloud continuum, um, starting to truly leverage uh, all the AWS assets and capabilities and services to, to truly speed their transformation. You know, our, a lot of our customers have, are needing to transform even faster today than they were before the pandemic. And, you know, we're focused on helping those customers do that with AWS services. So Mary, let's bring you into the conversation now. Accenture's internal IT organization has been leveraging AWS and public cloud for a while. Talk to me about that. You completed the journey a couple of years ago, 95% in the cloud. Talk to me about what you're doing there. Sure, Lisa. So our, our journey into the public cloud is complete. As you said, we put a bow on that project uh, a couple of years ago. We started in 2015 and we went all in on public cloud. So we, the number 95%, 95% represents a true measure of everything it takes to run Accenture. Everything addressable is in the public cloud today. So the 95% just represents uh, a, a small component of things that have to live outside of the cloud. But other than that, our journey to the cloud is complete. And we are very happy uh, being in the cloud because it has opened tremendous doors for, for us as a business that I'm sure we'll talk about here as we go. But it's fundamentally a different place we live in today than where we were before we were in the cloud. Miriam, you said something really powerful there a second ago. The Accenture's journey to the cloud is complete. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that. Talk to me about the impact, especially during the last 18 months that that cloud journey is delivering. I mean, one of the things I am extremely proud of uh, for our collective global teams around the world, when the, obviously the, you know, when COVID hit and the pandemic engulfed the world, the only difference for us was that people just did not come into an office to work. Our capabilities in the cloud, our capabilities of having everything in the cloud really made it that much easier for our people to go to work. We weren't fighting over uh, resources, around infrastructure, people could just work from home directly. So I'm extremely proud of the collective global team that made all of that happen as part of that uh, uh, execution of all those things. So it was really, uh, a very proud moment, I would say, for all of us running IT. As well, it should be. Chris, talk about that from your perspective of facilitating that massive pivot 18, 19 months ago and what your group was responsible for doing to enable this cloud journey to be complete. Yeah, I, I always laugh that, you know, uh, Miram and our internal uh, CIO organization, as we call it, is our was our first customer, right? Uh, you know, way back when I started working in this partnership, you know, we were already starting to leverage AWS S3 and EC2 and that um, inside Accenture, and we took a lot of those best practices and started helping helping our clients leverage those best practices. So, you know, from Accenture, we always kind of harvest from internally what we're doing. But you know, over the over the last several years, really our, our focus with the CIO organization and Miram's organization has been, you know, expanding the usage of non uh, you know IaaS, I call them IaaS services, right? So past EC2, you know, past S3, obviously there's always storage, there's always compute, but you know, truly doing and building serverless applications, 
truly using, you know, services, fully managed services. So, you know, the CI organization doesn't have to spend their time doing that. And, you know, for our customers, that's, a, that's while it's, they're still early on in a lot of their journeys, that's a novel idea is to truly try to sunset uh, IS services or EC2 and things like that, you know, and whether that's, you know, through some containerization or things like that. I think the other big part is, is the maturing security footprint. Right. Obviously, as as you use more and more of these AWS services, your security posture, your presence, how you think about security. Um, we created an asset called Secure Cloud Foundation, uh, leveraging many of the AWS services uh, in the security space that have come um, out like Guard Duty and others, really to help uh, make that security foundation stronger, make it easier for our customers, including CIO, to leverage those services and, and truly enable that move uh, further up the cloud or farther down the continuum, as we call it. Mary, I want to get your thoughts on security for a moment, because we have seen such a dramatic change in the threat landscape in the last 18, 19 months. We've seen a huge spike in ransomware. It's getting much more personal. It's now a household word. We've got the executive order. We had this rapid pivot to and, and hundreds of thousands of Accenture employees working from home. Talk to me about you, you feel very confident in the cloud journey that you've done. Where, where's your confidence level from a security perspective? As you said, security is the fastest growth in our business collectively. Like you said, the bad, the bad guys don't sleep. We don't sleep either when it comes to security. One of the things that we're constantly thinking about is how do we turn on a lot of our capabilities as an example. So even I would say at an enterprise level, it's different when you're running a big multinational corporation, 650,000 people like we do, we can't just turn everything on and hope for the best. We are very scripted in terms of how we think about those services, how we think about the processes, how we work with our CISO organization, so that we're very meticulous and very thorough in terms of what services we turn on, how we turn them on, when we turn them on, how long we make them available, because this is, this is the new world, right? We have extended our corporate structure out into the cloud. That means we have to think of different ways for how we want to consume those capabilities and services. So like Chris said, you know, the, the journey to the cloud for us is complete. A lot of it was IaaS. I would tell you uh, a lot of it was lift and shift for less. And we can talk about that if we get time, but it was more about getting into the cloud and taking advantage of the cloud where we are today, because now that we're there, we get to take advantage of all those capabilities um, that are there. And I would say the best part of being with uh, on, in, in the cloud is also having the the providers like AWS, they're with us, helping us with that security posture. So it's not just us doing this by ourselves. So Chris, I'm going to talk about that. Miriam just said this was mostly lift and shift. Talk to us about that. Cause when we talk to organizations in every industry, the cloud transition, the cloud journey is extremely challenging. It's complex. How did you do this? How did you facilitate this in, in a relatively short time period, Chris? Yeah, and, and you're right. Every one of these conversations I have with my clients, you know, there's a huge debate whether to lift and shift or modernize or build new, build cloud native, right? So, um, you know, in Accenture's uh, situation, you know, very early on, it was identified that we can we could do a large savings by doing a lift and shift migration, right? Uh, we were not a big data center owner, right? That wasn't, we're not a big capital intense organization. Uh, so for us, that that journey, we had, you know, colos and that stuff coming up for, for renewal. Um, and we knew that we could, you know, get some early savings there and really, you know, reduce our footprint and take that investment and then invest it into, you know, true modernization. So Miriam and his organization worked very closely, you know, to build the factory, to do the migrations, get that done in a very short amount of time, you know, and then turn their attention on truly refactoring, rebuilding the applications. Uh, I'm super proud of the number of applications that we've rebuilt. I'm super proud of the number of applications that that now are cloud native. Um, and we live in these applications every day. You know, they, they're everything from our performance to how we, we do our payroll and uh, do our time charging and things like that. But um, which, you know, was a, a big reason why, you know, we can access our systems remotely and, and at home versus going into, you know, different systems to, to get to that stuff. So, you know, it was very much heavily lift and shift early, and then really focusing on modernization. And as Miriam said, getting, you know, now it's about living there and continuing to, continuing to uh, modernize, continuing to uh, accelerate uh, what we're doing in the cloud. Yeah, if I can add to that, maybe Lisa, a little bit like, so our journey, Lift and shift was a core component of it. But the minute we decided to go to the cloud, 
one of the things, the first things we did is I said, no more VMs. So any new capability that we were going to build, we were going to build a cloud native microservices base. And that's been our standard for the last three or four years. So any new capability that comes along today that we must do custom, we build a cloud native microservices. Because one of the other things that I've got on my plate is I'm trying to reduce our overall technical debt. So all of these IaaS platforms, I still have to maintain them, patch them, support them, upgrade them. And I would rather be much more efficient at doing those things as, as I can and reinvest money into refactoring and modernizing the rest of the application fleet through containers, through microservices, et cetera, which then gives me the agility right back to actually go even faster to enable more services for the business. Speed is something that we've seen become even more critical in the last 18, 19 months where we needed to everybody pivot businesses multiple times over and over. But part of the challenge that Amir, I want to get your thoughts on this is this is a big cultural shift. Talk to me about you've been at Accenture for a long time. Talk to me about the cultural shift needed to facilitate this massive transformation to cloud and how Chris's team was a facilitator of that. So, you know, one of the things for us, I have probably in the last five years spoken to a thousand of our clients around our cloud journey and this culture conversation always comes up. And I will say, you know, the biggest thing for us was interesting. We had those same fears. We had some same, you know, when we first talked about going to the cloud, you know, six years ago, it was very, it, not everything was there that's there today. So the teams were extremely nervous and they were confident that we could never be as, as good in the cloud as we were on, on site yet. Here we are six years later and we're constantly finding ways to add value and take, take bring value back. And those, it's those same teams. And one of the things is just, we gave them the challenge to say, Hey, this is the future. We're telling our clients, this is where we're going. We have an opportunity here to do something different. And they took it and the team really took it on and they said, okay, let's do it. And they, and we looked at how we run in the cloud, the many different ways, whether we're using reserved instances, whether we're using uh, containers, whether we're using, you know, different uh, computer capabilities, we went through all of it and we're running such a highly efficient machine right now that it's like, we're still able to continue to eke out savings even five years after the program, e even two years after the program is complete, we're still able to get savings. That's outstanding. That's ROI that every business and every industry hopes to be able to achieve from this. I want to switch gears a little bit now because this is actually pretty cool. Accenture is really focus also on sustainability. You guys have signed on to the Amazon Climate Pledge, which if you don't know what the Amazon Climate Pledge is, this is back in 2019, Amazon co-founded this, a commitment to be net zero carbon across businesses by 2040, which is actually 10 years ahead of the Paris Agreement. Yoram, talk to us about that and from Accenture's perspective, why it was important to sign on to that. So on a, on a personal level, I, I love uh, are obviously uh, sustainability as a whole. I think about the world for, for my children that are growing up. So it's very important to me on a personal level as well. But I would say at a company level, what I love about the cloud is I am there right there with them. As they make investments, all of our enterprise capabilities are there. We are able to very quickly shift and use those capabilities. So as Amazon, uh, for example, in this scenario, creates new capabilities, new compute uh, offerings, new, new uh, storage offerings, whatever it may be, they're doing it with the sustainability lens and me by being in the cloud already, I can then turn to start using those things too. So as much as I can on that perspective, I'm in a great place with, as Amazon puts these sustainability capabilities out there, I'm right there consuming and making them more efficient. And then the other one is obviously as much of our workloads as we can uh, get to a cloud native perspective, microservices perspective, then we keep reducing that compute consumption and everything else that goes along with it. And lastly, I would say, you know, the, the other thing is we're very aggressive in managing all of our uh, systems in terms of uptime. So for example, in a data center, most, most organizations don't think about turning off their development environments and everything else. But for us, we're very rigid in this process. And you know, we have a, we have a target of uh, all of our development environments being down 55% of the time. And primarily that's also sustainability play in addition to a financial savings play. 
Awesome, great stuff. Chris, last question for you as we wrap up here. What are some of the things that you're excited about that's coming in cloud in the next few years? Obviously here we are at reInvent, gonna be hearing a lot of news, a lot of announcements about cloud in the coming days. What excites you most, Chris? Yeah, you know, um, obviously the machine learning and, and AI stuff is is always the most exciting things right now in cloud. And, you know, we've put a lot of those to use here inside of Accenture as well. And, and our, you know, in our SynOps platform, which we use with our customers to run, you know, more intelligent operations, uh, we use that internally as well. But, you know, one of the things that excites me the most is the continued innovation at the core, right? And, you know, whether that be, um, you know, chipsets, uh, you know, Maram talked a little bit about, you know, improvement in, in performance, improvement in power consumption, you know, Graviton, those type of stuff. That that excites me. Uh, every year I look forward to seeing what, what they come out with and, and then how we're going to put that to use. Well, I look forward to talking to you guys next year. You've done such a tremendous job. You should be proud of the massive transformation that you've done. I imagine this is would be a great case study. If it's not already written up, it should be. It's really impressive. Miriam and Chris, thank you for joining me at the summit, talking to me about what's going on with Accenture and AWS and some of the things that you are looking forward to. We appreciate your insights and your time. Thanks again, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. You're very welcome. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. This is the AWS Executive Summit presented by Accenture at AWS reInvent 2021.